Look at that. That looks so much better. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. So, doing? hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just got home, then out of town for about five days. It's been a very chaotic few weeks. Got all the plants moved in, and then two days later, which is boom, had to go. Ideally, I like to space things out a little. You're gonna turn on right now? I'm talking to the YouTube people. Oh, it actually is kind of chilly, so I'm just going to keep going with it. Part of the noise, but the heater does need to run. There's just been so much going on that it has been really hard to keep up with filming. Everything that's been going on and with what's out. I don't, should we even talk about this yet? Just roll the montage of the videos that I took while I was gone. A little bit of eye candy might be enjoyable to look at. And then can talk about all the other things that are going on or need to be going on. Wasn't that fun? Did you like the aquarium? I love the Atlanta Aquarium. It's one of my favorite places. I wasn't in Atlanta. I was down in southern Georgia, saw some palm trees, brought home a palm tree right here. Got a little seedling that needs to be potted up. And the first thing I did when I got home was grab my camera and remembered, oh yeah, I need to film a video because I have a video that has to come out tomorrow. 
got the Echeveria repotted and watered plants and now just trying to get back into the swing of things. It's kind of nice. I'm trying to keep things a little bit low key this week because everything the last several weeks has been very high pressure, lots of time crunches, and I don't really have the time crunches right now, at least not for the next few days until construction gets going on inside the home again. The contractor's been gone for a couple of weeks, which has been nice even though it's gone for one of those weeks. So yeah, back at it. The edge of area, this was in the last video. Y'all saw how thirsty it was, and I said, I'll give you an update so you can see if it's fluffed back up, and it has looking much better. Nice and perky. Haven't done anything with it. Just have it over here on the side of the table so the hot air is not blowing directly on it. And it had the one water ring. I watered it one time in that video. And that's a uh, that's it. I've watered plants in here. Sprayed some neem. Need to do some more of that. Going to be doing a lot of that this winter. I mentioned in last week's vlog that I had a bunch of plants that I got on clearance. And I was thinking at the time, oh, we'll just go outside when I get home and do yard work outside. Get a bunch of things planted and get things cleaned up and have them looking nice again because the pool liner was supposed to be done Monday while I was gone. So, you know, a few days prior to this video. But of course, it is not done. You wanna go outside and have a look at it? Have a look at it and you will be able to hear the problem as to why we won't be doing anything outside this week. Hey, Pumpkin, how you doing? Where's the turbo? Come on, Turbs. Yeah, good boy, good boy, turbo. You coming too, Toby? Come on. Come on, Tobes. you should come out too. Come on. Oh, that's fine. I'm not going to force you out. There it is. There's the liner. Y'all haven't seen the yard in a while either. Looks great, doesn't it? That thing is so freaking loud. It's been going for the last few weeks out here because they got the liner in and then uh, that person who broke the Monstera inside was working on the grout. Took him 10 days to lift the stone up and put down new grout. He's new. He was in training. It was a learning experience for him, and for some reason they just had him out here doing this by himself. There was nobody teaching him how to do it. I guess they just assumed that he knew what he was doing. Four hour project took 10 days. He did a lot more than just fixing up the coping. The coping being this marble right here. He did more than what they normally do. Part of the noise also, that was the whole point to me coming outside was to show you that it is just too dang loud to be filming out here. It sounds like there's a jet in the backyard. So won't be out here all that long just long enough to give the updates and get everybody caught up with what the heck's going on out here. Normally when they uh, re-grout these things, they just go through and pack new grout underneath them and smooth it out. He actually took all the stone, lifted it off, power washed it, used a solvent to clean it up, and it re-leveled and basically put a whole new thing of coping on here, which is great. Went above and beyond, but of course that meant that it was going to take much, much, much longer than just four hours. He also went through and sealed it and he applied a grit to it so it's not slippery so the stone's nice and shiny now it has a wet look to it that I absolutely love all I care about is that I like the work that was done it looks great it's nice and shiny it's going to clean up much more easily it's not going to because it's not porous right the stuff's not going to soak into it so that got finished and then uh, he left right and the rest of the company was supposed to come out and cut holes to put the new lights in the pool problem was the liner had started to sink down. There was an area over here, I'm not gonna go over there because it's gonna be too loud, where the liner was too droopy. So basically they came in, they put the liner in, you put the hose in, start to fill it up, and that helps hold it in place with this vacuum that goes over here. That vacuum helps keep it pulled tight so you don't want it to sink back down. And then once the water level is up to, I think about eight inches to a foot in the shallow end, that's when they come back and they stretch it, they pull it back up and it clips in. There's like a bead thing. I don't know if I'll be able to show it. I'm gonna try. Trevor, you gotta move, gotta move baby, move. Yeah, you can kind of see it right here, right there. That's where that liner clips in. It was too cold. We had that cold front move through here that that's why the garden looks the way it does. Froze everything. Couldn't stretch the liner. Uh, they tried to heat gun everything. It just, it wasn't going to work well in a way that would be good for the liner. So they had to wait. They came back Thursday. I was out of town. That didn't matter. They can be out here Friday. They came back, but I they just weren't able to get it done. They tried, couldn't do it. And then they showed up Monday. So a few days before this video came out, it was much warmer. It's like 84, 85. Gorgeous. Went from being very cold, 28 degrees, to being in the 80s. That made it much easier. They were able to get the liner up into place. And then uh, now all they have to do is get the holes cut out to put the lights in and the holes cut out for the skimmer. 
Skim two skimmers. There's two. One over here and one over there. And they say they will have that done Friday, the day before this video comes out. So there's just no way I'm going to be doing anything out here for a prolonged period of time because it's loud and also ugly. I'm tired of looking at this. But it looks nice though, doesn't it? It's nice, pretty blue color. It's not all bleached out. The guy who did the coping down here, he also put a clear coat on the steps to sell protections they're starting to wear down. Getting new steps would cost several thousand dollars and that seemed unnecessary because once there's water in here you can't really tell that the steps were starting to chip. But he did a nice clear coat on there. Some of that gritty stuff you put into the coping so that they're not too slippery and that should make them last several more years so that they're being a problem. There was one major issue with this project that, I don't know, can you see it? How about now? You see it now? Right there, all that, right there. While that guy who was working on the coping was putting down the sealer, there's a solvent you put down to help clean out the pores of the marble or something. Before he put the sealant down, he, uh, he spilt his bucket and it melted the paint right off of the liner. And that's why I'm not freaking out about the Monstera that got broken inside. There were some people who were like, why are you not more upset by this? I was upset. Remember some time had passed before I filmed the video. I have a feeling that this person was probably fired. He's a great guy. I spent like nearly 20 days out here over the last month. We got to know each other pretty well. That's like a seven to $10,000 mistake right there. Not gonna have them replace the liner, that'd be horribly wasteful. Nobody's even complaining about this because to me, okay, so uh, the liner's defective now. It doesn't look great. To me, that's not worth someone's job. My pool is not worth someone's career. So I haven't said much of anything to the rest of the pool company, the higher-ups, other than can we maybe take some of the scrap liner from here and just laminate it over that spot? I think that would be the way to go. Probably the best option to fix it. And most of that's going to be underwater, so I don't care all that much. And a really big spot of it, I think will be cut out for the skimmer box or very close to the skimmer box. So it probably won't even be that noticeable. That's what we're all hoping anyways. Cause like I said, this isn't worth someone's job to me, but given the fact that he was here for such an incredibly long time working on what the pool company said should have been a very, very, very quick job. And it is normally a very quick job. And then that happening down there, I have a feeling that the fate of the person who broke that monster in there probably isn't great career-wise with this company, and uh, that's unfortunate. So that's uh, you, just, you don't kick someone while they're down, or ever. Maybe just, we don't kick, I don't like to kick people. I'm not gonna do that. That's it, we all caught up on the pool and the noise. They can't turn that thing off, I guess, until the rest of the pool's full of water. Like I said, that's the vacuum is helping to keep the liner pushed into place, pulled into place, that is. I'm gonna have a quick look at the plants that I picked up. I'm not going to plant them because I would like to do that in a video and it's just too loud up. I've already spent enough time out here with that noisy motor. It's assuming that it's really loud. I can't really say for sure. It's probably pretty obnoxious though. Although I am using a different camera. Maybe the noise cancellation's better. So look at the kale and cabbages. I know I said I wasn't gonna do it, but have a look at all the ones I was able to get at 75% off. They were less than two bucks a piece. So I bought every single one they had at Lowe's. I went in to grab some soil. I saw 75% off. It was also 29 degrees outside. It was so cold, but uh, worth it. There's enough to do two white and three red on each of these containers that have the spring grove arbs in them. So I have them placed, but I haven't planted them yet because I went out of town. So I just put them in place and had the person who's taking care of things water those while I was gone. And then there's more down here. You can see them. The further I go down here, the worse the audio is going to get. So you just, uh, you just got to go with it. There's some of them over there. Yeah, cabbage and kale are fun. They uh, don't always survive that well in the winters here. It just depends on the winter. But hey, we'll see what happens. Hopefully they last a long time. There's one more plant that is really cool. It's been on my wish list for a long, long time. And I got a great deal. And you want to see it? Of course you do. That's why we're here, right? Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Do you know what it is? It's a blue atlas cedar. See that? There's the name, Atlas Blue Cedar. Just putting that there so I don't have to type it on the screen. Being lazy. These get um, pretty big, <laughs> 60 by 40. There's a variety that stays smaller. It's not one I've ever been able to find for sale before. This was only $30, or may, might've been 28 or 29. I cannot remember. It's normally 160, which is already not a bad price for one this size. It's so pretty. It's that classic Alpine shape to it. Such fun trees. So you're probably wondering, what are you gonna do with this? Uh, it's gonna, it's the winter thing. It's a winter decoration. 
for now. And it will probably end up being planted in somebody else's yard in the spring, because I don't know where the heck I would put it. But this winter, it's going to be really fun and beautiful to look at. Or heck, the neighbors, maybe if their pool ever gets finished up there, I might offer it to them. They may want it for their landscaping, because they're gorgeous trees. And that was a heck of a deal. So that's, okay, that's enough. It's been loud enough out here. Let's go back inside. Okay, I see. It's going to be like that, huh? I just watered you yesterday, and, well, that's, that, actually, that's what the problem was. I came home and it was all droopy and sad looking and I watered it very heavily and now all those droopy leaves that were too droopy to recover are going to fall off. Hibiscus, when you bring them in for the winter, for me at least, they tend to drop a lot of leaves, especially if I don't move them right into really intense bright light, which I didn't want to do because I can't guarantee I'm going to have a really bright spot so I'll be able to keep it on all winter. Right now there are several spots I could put it in where it would do really well, but I think I might need those spots for other plants that are of more importance than the hibiscus. So I just tucked it over here. Should be good right here. I had the temperature turned down while I was gone, so I adjusted the heater down to 65, which is pretty cool, but absolutely fine for the plants. It's 65 degrees, you know, that's not going to hurt them. That just seemed like the right thing to do to reduce the amount of watering that I or any watering, really. I just wanted the plants to sit still. I lightly watered everything before I left. Just give everything a light drink. They didn't see that thirsty. I was like, well, I'm only going to be gone like five days. They should be fine. And for the most part, they were. There were a few plants that were droopy. The hibiscus, that's, I mean, that's the main one, right? Everything else, it looks okay. Oh, yeah. That's what's been going on. That's a month long of pool projects. I probably could have just not said anything and waited until next week when it's done if they actually show up on Friday to finish it. I'll probably do a quick catch up when it is done because I'm not closing that pool until I've had a solid two weeks of being able to swim twice a day. I'm going to kick my own ass out there working out before that thing gets shut down because I haven't been able to swim laps in like six weeks now. And that's the, one of the few exercises I can do that doesn't mess with my shoulders. So I want to be able to really go at it hardcore before I have to cover it up and shut it down. I should pot up this palm tree. I don't have anything else plan for this week because well one I'm just I'm tired <laughs> I've been doing a lot and I think it would be nice to just chill for a bit and also because when I was at the Atlanta Aquarium I decided hey you know what would be fun I should film everything in like the highest resolution possible which is a resolution that my main camera that I use that hooks all my tripods and everything doesn't even have and just to make things easier it's best for the bulk of the video to be in the same format so uh, I'm just picking up with the, basically my camera phone for this video and I don't want to get involved in projects where I'd like to be using the tripod and my wireless microphones all that stuff. This is a moment where I would like to have the tripod. I used to film all my videos with one hand. I don't know how I did that a long time ago. It's just a palmetto seedling. They are not the easiest things to dig up and transplant. One because they put down a very long root. In the sable palms, you break a root, generally that entire root dies. They don't always transplant very well because of that, but I figured I'd give it a shot. I also have a bag of seeds that I can pot up while I'm at it. Well, I'll probably hold off on that for a couple of months just until I have things more situated where I can put out heat pads because the sable palms really do best when you have some heat for them. Nice deep pot right here. The soil blend that I use for the Echeveria, I think that will be just fine for potting up a little bitty sable palm. I don't see why it would have any issues with this. I can top dress it with some organics. My main thing is to just be sure that this is a blend that's going to have enough in it for those roots to get going. This is a very nice deep pot. Make sure that all that white that was in there is submerged below the soil. Right, don't want that sticking up. That's the line where it was planted when it was outside planted where the seeds had fallen. That's what I should say. Really tap that down. This is a, that's a very good sized pot. Really probably too big, but it's what I have. So it's just, it's what I'm going with. Yeah, we'll see if anything happens with it. I have very high hopes just because, well, it's a sable palmetto. We'll tear up those roots too much. I really did some pulling on those roots. As long as it stays nice and warm and gets plenty of bright light and that soil stays consistently moist, should get a good enough root system out of this to hopefully bump it up into a larger pot this time next year. I'm not going to bother trying with it outdoors until it's, I don't know, generally uh, with sable palmettos this far north, I'm in 6B, they need to be, uh, I don't know, to a point where they have like a 6 to 8 inch caliper at the base 
So it's not so much a matter of the time that passes. It's really just how thick and girthy they end up getting. And that can take some time. Could be three to five years. I don't know. I also might just say screw it and next year plant it in the ground with some heat cables and cover it up. Who knows? That will likely be what I'll end up doing just because I feel like that's how I do most things is say, eh, I'd rather have it in the ground. So I'll probably end up putting it in the ground and just waiting and seeing what happens from that point on. So there we go. We did a plant thing. I <laughs> potted up a palm tree. Feels good to be home and to not have a thousand things to do. That feels really nice too. November through February, it's a much more relaxed, chill time of year. I enjoy the off season, uh, but I, I, mean, I also, of course, love even more so the part where you get to be outside March through October, but the just the chaos and the not knowing when you have to move the plants in because when's there going to be a sudden freeze? That's all behind us now, so the plants can just chill and relax. I need to start moving them back out to do more heavy drenching. Drench, what just happened to my brain, my mouth, it stopped working. Easier to spray them down for bug removal outside because I can really get at them with more pressure than I can in here. Reconfigure the shelves, be doing all this next week. I'm actually I'm really looking forward to it. Just like I said, I want to use the camera where I can put things up on a tripod and have a wireless microphone. But uh, I'd like to probably scoot some shelves around, make more space. I have the new lights, additional lights to put up there. Somebody commented that two grow lights isn't enough to grow. Play. I have, there are many, many, many more than two grow lights in here. Many more. There's an ROI with grow lights. You reach a certain level, you have max out what they're actually going to do. As long as the plants keep flowering, I'd say things are pretty good. And uh, they have been. Every year I add more. I don't ever take any away. So if there is one that's out right there, I'm not really going to mess with it. That one doesn't really do anything other than make it harder for the camera to focus on stuff when I'm filming because things are so backlit. I used to have more plants in the pond area and that one just kind of helped illuminate things more for the videos. Or the same with those two. There'll be taller plants underneath those. This right here is completely pointless. So I should probably move it except that it lights up the pond and that looks really nice. And uh, I'd like to install some sort of waterfall system right here. Just one, it would look better and would help with the humidity and the oxygenation of the water. There's a pump in there that's moving the water around. I've just been putting the hose down in the water when I film to reduce the background noise. There's been a lot of background noise lately. Something stinks out here. Not a bad stink, like a very florally smell, but it's florally plus wet dirt. I don't know how to describe it. I think it's one of the orchids that has a, the um, Sherry Baby Oncidium. It has that sweet smell, but there's also just the smell of wet combined with it and I, uh, I don't really like it coconut palms pushing up a new frond that's exciting this isn't tour time i should actually probably go because i filmed this video in 4k at 60p which means that it's going to be a very large file to get exported and probably take at least eight to ten hours to upload so the shorter the better on my end and I'm, i know not on your end but up we'll make it up next week there's a lot to do out here lots of little things too that i'm really excited about i'm gonna get this medalena repotted Metanil, Medellin, what did I just say? Definitely time to go. Comment down below, say hi. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a beautiful day, a beautiful life, and everything's just going absolutely fantastically for you. Again, comment down below, say hi. What's going on with your plants, with your gardens? Y'all getting ready for the holidays? Anybody else with me on the fact that, yeah, it's sad that summer's over, but there's just something nice and refreshing knowing that you got it done. The plants are in, and now you can start the second part of the year where you just get to have fun with the plants indoors. Maybe do some propagations, do some seed startings. What do you got going on? What are your plans? All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.